Hey, what's up everybody? Landon with LMR.com. We're going to be playing around 2024 again today on the dyno. K&N just recently released their uh, cold air intake kit. So uh, we're going to install it on the car and uh, see if it's making any power. But leading up to the K&N, what we're going to go ahead and do, yes, we already have numbers on the car, but we're going to go ahead and just start from scratch. Uh, it's a little bit different day, a little bit different conditions. Uh, we're going to do a uh, baseline pull uh, with the way the car sits currently. Only thing it has is still the resonator delete and we put the factory wheels back on it. We'll make a hit. Uh, we're going to try to keep maybe the water temp or we'll find some standard so that all the runs are or, uh, apples to apples comparison. So we'll probably pick like 185 or 190 degree water temp. Are we gonna dyno it with the hood open? Yes, you can dyno it with the hood closed, but for those particularities and for what we're doing, it really doesn't matter. Stock pull as we see it, we'll go in there, we'll take the carbon traps out, make another pull. Then we'll go in and do the uh, high flow filters only without the carbon trap. And then we'll come back and put the K&N intake on it and then compare all the results. So uh, we'll do a uh, quick trip around the car, make sure we're good to go. Y'all know the drill. 10R80 car, the pulls we made in fifth gear. That way we can utilize the entire RPM range. It's a 315 rear gear. And then with the factory wheel, that tire is a 255 40 uh, 19 rear tire. We have uh, 93 octane fuel in the tank like we always do. Factory Ford calibration. There's still no tuning available for these cars at the time of this video. See, so, yeah, other than that, I think we're ready to rock and roll. So we'll, uh, we'll make some hits. All right, people, carbon traps are out. Uh, we put the lids back on, uh, still with the stock paper filter. Uh, car should be cooled off now, but we'll get it back up to that temperature, about 185 degrees. Cylinder head temp, uh, that way we kind of have some sort of a controlled variable between all the runs. That way we don't do a run hotter or a run cooler and you know so on and so forth. Like I said, that way we can try to keep this apples to apples, which by the way, it is 71 degrees here in the shop. Humidity, I could check, but it probably feels probably 60%, 60, 70% humidity, give or take. But yeah, we're locked and loaded, carbon traps are out. We'll make another hit. All right, people, so uh, next uh, venture here, we've got the uh, high flow K&N filter. Uh, we're gonna put on here uh, with the factory air boxes. Uh, again, carbon traps are removed and uh, we're gonna see if it uh, picks up any power over the factory paper filter. And of course we got two of them here because there's two of them on this car. And I believe we can reinstall the air box lids, uh, but we'll double check here once we go uh, pull those lids off and get these, get these situated. Everybody Birdman. Yeah, what's up, Birdman? Birdman, say hi. The Birdmanicus homunculus is a rare sight indeed. It's very elusive. It takes pride in its hard work. It is a spectacular specimen and I wish it well. And hope it thrives in this concrete jungle which he calls home. Bam, got a five minute swap. Let's we'll see what that equates to power. Maybe up there, Nick. I think I left it over there. Yeah, that's all the, all the telescoping we got. Yeah, that's it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Here comes the claw. Oh, the claws are messy. Just hold on to that. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me hold, let me hold. Let me hold. Let me hold. Where are you going? Hold we're gonna, we're gonna speed it up. Nick's, Nick's trying to caress Yeah, right, 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 right. I remember you told me. Nick yeah, Dad, you told you, us. Yeah. What's the blue boy? How do I do this? There's a tab underneath. There's a tab underneath. I'm feeling it. Kind of push it towards the front and like out. Oh, there it goes. Okay, okay, I got you. Oh, you have got it. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. A little man struggling over there. I did. It's just this pushpin. 
I just need like a little flat head to push its little pucker butt through. Ah, thank you. God bless America. Okay. What happened? Bored their infinite wisdom. Yeah? How infinite is it? Infinite. Does it go beyond space and time? Uh, airflow oh, goes with. Airflow well, I guess they can't really set up. Airflow. Now that's uh, asymmetrical. Asymmetrical. Uh, plan. Plan. Is it is it hot pockets or is it uh, pizza bites? It's pizza bites. Oh, that's uh, bagel bites. Bagel bites. That's it. You pizza in the morning. 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 I think we all do. The thing I always hate about bagel bites is how that when you dip, when you cook them in the microwave, you always had there were like two or three that were like burnt up, and then like two or three that were still like cold. You're like, how does this happen? Oh, man, they're not gonna lose all them games. That'll be his biggest tiger. Damn. Got it. Nope. Still. All right, people, uh, we got the K&N. Uh, what are they calling this? The Typhoon intake uh, is installed into the 2024 GT. It's definitely a cold air intake. You know, they've got kind of the open element design here. Still getting the cool air coming through the grill opening directed towards the filter. You got the uh, black hose clamps, uh, black couplers, you know, looks, looks good. I just know Ford paint code, so to me, that's like the magnetic or dark shadow gray painted intake tubes, you know, helps flow in the engine bay. So uh, KN's claiming some pretty good curve gains. So we're gonna get it back to that uh, about 185 cylinder head temp like we've been doing all the other runs. We're gonna see if those claim for truth. All right, everybody, we got the cold air intake on the car. We went ahead and did a run. Yes, we did it with the hood open. That's our controlled variable here. You could close the hood and do all these runs again, but here's kind of where you run into an issue with a closed hood. As the car progresses in speed, the little fan we have in front of here doesn't have the correct wind speed to simulate how fast the car is going. I know that's kind of difficult to understand, but you know, if this was a fancy dyno cell, you know, where we had all the appropriate fans that could simulate that wind speed as the car got faster on the drum, you know, we'd have, uh, a lot more truer result per se with the hood closed. Uh, when you have a tiny fan like this, even if we had two, three, four, whatever, the case may be, it's, it's still not an accurate representation of the specific wind speed. And what happens is with the hood closed, uh, you get a bunch of uh, engine heat in that area and that little bitty old fan can't move enough air, you know, through the grill, up around the hood and let it escape through uh, that heat extractor. What happens, again, stuff just starts to heat soak in there. Yes, that's true when you're going down the road, but however, the faster you go, the more wind speed's coming through the grill, it's pushing up and out of the hood, obviously doing what it's supposed to do. I know I'm kind of sounding a little uh, verbatim here, but when you close the hood, you got a little fan, you know, it's still not getting the result you want to get. So that's why we just leave the hood open. No, that doesn't replicate how you drive down the road, but neither does closing the hood with a small fan. We're going to just run through the results. We did this one a little bit differently today. Uh, instead of doing a run, talking about the results, doing a run, talking about the results, we just did all the runs and then now we're going to talk about the results. So the way the car sits with the stock wheel, resonator delete, carbon trap still in, the whole nine yards, pretty much bone stock car with the exception of the resonator delete. 410.5 horsepower at 7,300 RPM, 362.3 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM. Well, if you remember this car when we first dynoed it, it was actually making more power on that day. Well, I'll be the first to tell you, the days will differ no matter what. You know, we could go dyno this thing tomorrow, you know, and it may make two horsepower less, it may make eight horsepower more. You know, that's just the variances from day to day with dynoing vehicles. Run two, all we did was pull the carbon traps. Car made 411.4 horsepower at 7,200 RPM, 359.8 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM. A little bit of bump in horsepower, a little bit of drop in torque. You know, if you're watching other videos, you're seeing other people pull carbon traps, you may see those cars picking up a little bit of power, picking up a little bit of torque, or losing a little bit of power, losing a little bit of torque. And that just goes back uh, to the variances that I'm talking about. Every car is a little bit different. Every dyno is a little bit different. Run number three, no carbon trap with the high flow K&N filters. Uh, here's where the car 
did pick up a little bit of power. 414.4 horsepower at 7,500 RPM, 364.4 pound-feet of torque at 4,900 RPM. And because of that, there are the variances in runs. You know, you could see some of that, this power gain, but being that the filter media on those high flow filters isn't as dense as like a paper filter, you get more air through the intakes and making a little bit more power. Now here's where it gets really good. I'll be honest with y'all. When I was putting on this cold air intake kit, you know, I was kind of cussing and fussing. I don't like this at all. It ain't Lando spec. But that's just who I am. That's just how I operate. Kind of always been a fan of cold air intake kits, you know, where they make sense. But then there's always the other side of me that, hey, Ford spent all this money in engineering, you know, a factory cold air kit. Well, why would you want to change something like that? Well, anyways, we went ahead and installed the K&N Typhoon intake or cold air intake is what I'm calling it. And with the carbon trap removed, obviously, car made 424.3 horsepower at 7,100 RPM, 373.2 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM. So if you go look at all those runs and you compare them, that's some pretty good peak gains and there's some pretty good curb gains in there as well. Now, here's where it gets really interesting and we're going to be fully transparent with you. We closed the hood and we did another run with the K&N cold air intake. And this is where I was telling y'all about the heat soak. The car made 403.5 horsepower at 7,400 RPM and 353.4 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM. You compare all five of those runs, the run with the hood closed uh, was the worst and rightfully so because that fan is not turning enough to blow enough wind speed to simulate a real world condition. All right, everybody, so real quick, full disclosure, we get excited on dyno days. And if we're doing multiple runs with multiple different setups, we'll try different things just to see what the car makes. And that's the case with the K&N intake and the hood closed. That was the last pull of the day. And that was when we thought to make that type of run. So we didn't do pulls with the other setups and the hood closed. So figure we should be fully transparent with you. We got back, we looked at the footage and we were like, oh, whoops, we didn't do pulls with the hood closed on the other setup. Y'all can yell at me in the comments. You should have done that. But regardless, y'all have some data to go off of. Take that as you wish. Go back to the video. So again, that's why we leave the hoods open, just so we can create a constant variable. Yes, we could close the hood on every single run, but where you can find that might not make much difference, especially with like a closed air box, it will do a better job of shielding the heat. Uh, yes, it would heat soak, over time, you know, if we were to let it sit here for five minutes and then make a hit, uh, but yeah, you'll probably see a drop in power with the closed lid setup. So we just avoid all that. We run it with the hood open. That's the way we've always done it. And that's what you see a lot of tuners do as well. Now, if we were Ford, you know, we had some, some big money here. We had a fancy dyno, like I was saying earlier, with all the correct fans to simulate the wind speed. Sure, we'll close the hood. And that would be, you know, almost as accurate as you could get for a real world condition. But anyways, we figured we'd just throw that out there. I think it's fair to be transparent like that. That's why you see folks wrap metal inlet tubes in like the uh, heat resistant tape. You'll also find people that are trying to pinch every little bit of power they can. You know, they'll pull their intakes off and wrap the underside of the intake with this heat reflective tape, you know, just to kind of create that barrier from, uh, you know, heat from the engine. So I hope y'all enjoyed that one as much as we did. It was, it's neat to kind of see it all in a progressive state. Man, we can't really wait until tuning is available for these cars. I'd like to see what just a bone stock 2024 could do with just a calibration. I think with this dual intake setup uh, and all that good airflow and you can really go in there and, you know, move some timing tables and stuff like that. You'll probably see some uh, good power gains in naturally aspirated forms. Y'all know me, I'll sit here and uh, talk y'all's ears off. Would like to point out one thing before we cut you loose, I forgot to talk about. Uh, K&N actually did their own testing. Uh, I'm not, I don't know how they did their testing. Uh, in the box, they kind of give you a uh, data sheet, I guess, if you must, on the horsepower curve here, 18.84 horsepower in the curve uh, at 5,936 RPM over a stock car. And then uh, for torque here, 23.04 pound feet uh, of torque in the curve at 3,305 RPM. Our numbers kind of reflect that in a way. Uh, I don't think it made as much in the curve, but they were close. And if K&N did their testing with the hood open, like we did and how we got our results, that's pretty dang accurate. That's it folks. If you find value in what we do, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and uh, like the video. I think I said that backwards, but it's okay. And until we see you in the next one for all things 2024, keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.